To my beloved brethren and God's holy people across the globe, welcome to another program in the series, A Word to the Nation broadcast. I am Pastor Carol Wilson, your humble servant, and I encourage you to spare a few minutes out of your busy schedule and allow the Lord to speak to your hearts. Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. Good morning to everyone tuning into the broadcast this morning. The divine favor of the Sovereign Lord continues to shine down on us, for which we are very grateful. There is a short verse of scripture that I wish to bring to your attention this morning. It is from Luke 17, verse 32. It says, Remember Lot's wife. These three words will be the theme of our broadcast this morning. Remember Lot's wife. The irony is that there isn't much that is recorded in scriptures about her. We were not even given a name for her, yet we are admonished to remember Lot's wife. I will refer to her as Mrs. Lot. First of all, we need to seriously consider who this warning was coming from and the context in which it was given. This important advice was given by Jesus Christ himself. The context was that he was responding to a question from the Pharisees concerning the coming kingdom. After enlightening them that the coming of the Son of Man will not be a secret event, he began pointing out the similarities between the coming kingdom and the days of Noah. He said, people went on eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage until the day Noah boarded the ark, and the floods came and destroyed them all. He then mentioned the similarities with the coming kingdom and the days of Lot. He said it will be the same as it was in the days of Lot. People went on eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, building. But on the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be like that on the day the Son of Man is revealed. It is at this juncture that Jesus said, Remember Lot's wife. Let us see what we can glean from what we know. First of all, I have noticed two definitions for the word Sodom. One, burning. And two, a place notorious for vice or corruption. We notice that Lot, though being part of Abraham's small family, as they journeyed, he began to drift in a particular direction. Genesis 12 verse 4 tells us that Abraham went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Chapter 13, 5 to 11 tells us a story. It says, Now Lot, who was traveling with Abraham, also had flocks, herds, and tents. But the land was unable to support them as long as they stayed together. 
for they had so many possessions that they could not stay together. And there was quarreling between the herdsmen of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were living in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please, let's not have a quarreling between you and me, or between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, since we are relatives. Isn't the whole land before you separate from me? If you go to the left, I will go to the right, and if you go to the right, I will go to the left. Lot looked out and saw that the entire plain of Jordan, as far as Zor, was well watered everywhere, like the Lord's garden and the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose the entire plain of the Jordan for himself. Then Lot journeyed eastward and they separated from each other. So we see here that Lot chose the plain of Jordan and he separated himself from Abraham. Then verse 12 and 13 tells us, Abraham lived in the land of Canaan, but Lot lived in the cities of the plain and set up his tent near Sodom. So now he was not just in Jordan, but he pitched his tent towards Sodom. Verse 13 says, Now the men of Sodom were evil sinners immensely against the Lord. Then 14.12 says, They also took Abraham's nephew Lot and his possessions, for he was living in Sodom. And they went on. So we see here that now Lot was not just pitched near Sodom, but he was actually living in Sodom. Chapter 19, 1 tells us, The two angels entered Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting in Sodom's gateway. When Lot saw them, he got up to meet them. He bowed himself his face to the ground. So now Lot was not only living in Sodom, but sitting in the gates of Sodom, indicating that he assumed some kind of leadership responsibility in the city of Sodom. Mrs. Lot was the wife of a prominent citizen of Sodom. And not only that, but it seemed that she might have also been a native of Sodom. When Lot separated from Abraham and went to live at Sodom, we read nothing of having a wife or children. This is one reason for inferring that he got married after he came to live in Sodom. Consequently, she was a daughter of Sodom, with her roots buried deep within its culture. Although Mrs. Lot seemed to have been worldly-minded herself, her husband was a religious person, and she had many opportunities of redeeming her character and turning to the Lord. Yet she rejected them. When the testing time came, she preferred the world to God. Mrs. Lot had a number of positive things going in her favor. She had a godly husband in Lot. She had heavenly visitors 
the angels came to visit her family and to rescue them. She had divine warning. The angels took them by the hand and literally pulled them out of Sodom and instructed them saying, run for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere on the plain. Run to the mountains on, or you will be swept away. She had seen the wicked punished. She saw the men who came to their door wanting to violate the angels of God that they were all struck with blindness. Despite all of that, her heart, her mind, her desires were still towards Sodom. What was it that was seemingly more important to her than the saving of her life and ultimately her soul? Could it be the house? Could it be her curtains and decor? Could it be the, the association with her neighbors? Could it be her years of accumulation of wealth and resources? Could it be just a, a sentimental attachment to the place of her birth and life? I do not really know the correct answers to this question. But what I do know, based on the admonition from the Lord, Mrs. Lot obviously made some, some bad choices. I also know that there are people around us who do not like to be corrected. They will blatantly tell you that they prefer to make their own mistakes. As it relates to this, there are two things that I have learned in life. One, if you choose to make your own mistakes, sometimes the consequences can be detrimental and you might never ever live to regret it. And two, it costs you nothing to learn from the mistakes of others and to observe the consequences. With that in mind, you need to take on the instructions of the Lord Jesus and remember Lot's wife. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for a Word to the Nation broadcast, B109. 
This is your brother and friend, Carol Wilson, saying, Have a happy Sabbath, a fantastic day, and may the God of heaven bless you real good. Peace and love to you all.